So today we actually we 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 have to do the chap, uh, chapter five, right? I believe so. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, chapter five. Yeah, 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 yeah chapter five. Okay, so let's start. So today we uh, chapter five actually have a hypothesis test and confidence interval in the simple regression model. So it is just kind of a more in-depth understanding about the linear regression that we did the last, last time. So, but these are the kind of actually what we have to say about the diagnosis of the linear regression model saying about the MC uh, to, to check out the validity and robustness of our regression model. So let me write this out. And then today's subsection is uh, testing the hypothesis regarding the regression coefficients. So that means we have, uh, when we, when we get the kind of like a simple regression model, like a, like a y is function of x, in that case, we can say fy equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus epsilon, epsilon, not the 0. So this is actually error term. This is actually error term. So we actually, according to the linear regression, we have a kind of assumption that the error term actually follows the standard deviations, like uh, with a uh, mean is zero and standard, devi uh, standard deviation is one. So that is the variation is one. And then uh, we have a uh, beta one and beta zero. Beta zero is a kind of, uh, we have a line intercept. And then a beta one is uh, what we call maybe regression coefficient. Right. So that's the that's the how it looks like when we actually say about the simple regression model, right? But the thing is, when we say about the testing the hypothesis regarding the regression coefficients, means we have to test this one, right? Because uh, based on the y and x like this, maybe y1 and yi and x1 and xi, xj. Anyway, we have a actual kind of a, a y is a function of x. We actually have a, this kind of a relationship and then at least the, from this relationship, we can actually calculate the regression coefficients. But the thing is our question now is how this how significant this is, you know? That's the kind of a hypothesis. So that's what we're gonna do, okay? Okay, let's move on to the next one. So, so here we have a testing the two side hypothesis concerning the slope of the coefficient, which is beta one, right? In, in the equation that we saw in the previous previous screenshots. So it is actually generally about the t-statistic kind of test. So when we talk about the t-statistics, t uh, okay, here, t-statistics. T t-statistic is the kind of like a standard error of estimator, like SE. And then that means actually like a sig this one is actually a kind of a standard deviation, like a sigma, like a low. And then uh, estimate value is uh, like a, hold on, uh, not the X, it's a Y hat minus mu, A or, uh, mu Y. That's the kind of a, kind of a how we can, we can try to, try to do like, uh, this is not the mu y, this is a kind of a y, y i, which is the hypothesis value, right? So that's the standard error of the estimator we can try to get. 
And then when we try to do this, is that there is actually kind of a very complicated, uh, complicated kind of a equation to get the standard errors. But it is actually based on the definition of a standard error when we see the chapter 3.3. .3. When you're looking through the 3.3, .3, we also able to calculate the, what the standard or uh, standard error is are based on the our mean and sample mean and then some sample uh, uh, standard standard deviation for the sample population uh, sample sample mean uh, sample for the sample so to compute the t statistic is a kind of a standard error and then better one that we estimate and then a better one and zero for the, our hypothesis. The reason why it's a better one and zero is kind of like a, in this case, what we can test is our hypothesis, the hypothesis is better one is zero. And then the ultimate alternative hypothesis is a better one is not zero. Okay. So, Actually, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, which is beta one is zero. That means we have to accept the alternative hypothesis, which is a beta one is not zero. That means there is the significant relationship. Uh, there is a relation. Actually, there is a relationship between uh, uh, between the y and x. That's the how this one actually test. So. So t statistic for the linear simple linear regression is just kind of a simply checking out is that there is a relationship. Okay. Is there any question so far? Okay. And then okay, how I can all right. So when we have a OLS regression again, uh, model for the chapter four, like a, like a score, that is, uh, this one is actually better zero. And then uh, minus, minus 2.28 is actually better one. And then uh, this one is a students to teacher ratio, right? So that is actually X1, right? And then R square is the 0 0.051, which is a quite low. Yeah, because this one is that that means that there is only 5.1 percent of the variation in explaining the variation of the y, right? According to the this linear model. So, so when we look to down here, yeah, everyone actually maybe if you are familiar with the R, actually you already quite familiar with these kind of linear regressions. But the thing is in, the, in this book actually explain the both the, like a manual way, you can actually calculating it. And then the other way is the just quickest way when we usually done. So it's a kind of, cause the reason why they actually have a both of them is uh, this one is a more like a, uh, focusing on the mathematical kind of explanation of the, how each regression or everything is working on behind the scene. So, so when we actually do the, by using the LM, LM command up to the top, right, right here, when we try to do the score and then uh, students teacher ratio by using the CA school uh, data set, and then uh, we can some, we can actually just uh, type in the summary, uh, summary and LM gonna give us the, all of the, this information actually. But the thing is when we LM actually does is that uh, there is also a set of the list. They actually, their output is a kind of a set of the list. So they actually, you can actually extract the coefficients separately which is the like, like a, by using the dollar sign and then uh, as a look like a dealing with a, like a variable. And then here is a kind of a result. So when you see here, estimate is uh, this number. To get this number, how you can calculate is 
is this one is a T value and then this one is a standard error, right? So, so that means 9.467 and then 6, 6.98932 divided by 9.467. When you calculate this one, actually you can get the 73A2 or something. That's the how it, it works. And then this is a standard deviation and this is a better. The reason why we only use the, this number is actually in, 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 the, in, the, in, in here, there is actually minus zero is omitted because uh, our hypothesis up to, as we can see up to the top is a better one is the zero, right? So that means we have to testing the, how far our estimate is uh, from the zero value in the standard, uh, standard deviation, uh, stand, uh, standardized the normal distributions. So that's the how we can testing about the hypothesis. So how, how it is the far from the zero? Do, do you understand what you're saying? And then, and then for, for this one, like a students and teacher ratio, as you can see at the bottom, T value can be calculated like a minus negative 2.2798, maybe divided by 0.4798, actually, get the approximate value for minus four, seven, five, one, three, et cetera. So that's the how, how this one actually come from. So as you can see here, our hypothesis is a better one is zero versus better one is not zero. So we actually testing the dead zero value. And then how far negative 2.2798 is from the zero value and then and then based on that, we can actually, my, our next question is based on the, how far that estimate is from the zero value, we can testing about the significant of the debt coefficients within, uh, within the kind of 5% uh, P, uh, P value level, what is called the P value level. So, that's the how these things. And then the degree of the freedom in here is the number of sample size. And then this is the number of parameter, which is the, in this case, actually we only have a X1 as a, as a single variable. So this one is actually one right now. So it's a N minus one minus one. So it's actually N minus two. That's the degree of the freedom because uh, that's the reason why we have a, we have a 100, 118 kind of a degree of the freedom in here. Cause when we have a degree of the freedom, we actually use the, this degree of the freedom to calculate the, calculate the chi-square uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, for the, for the app statistics. Apple statistic, maybe we can see the later and then Apple statistic actually used to the kind of a goodness of fit of the linear reverse model. So when you scroll down here, we can say, so when we have actually there is a, when to, to get to the how significant that better value, that, that better estimate is, we have to calculate the, what is called the p-value, right? So as we know, our rule of thumb of the p-value is when we calculate the, all of the t-statistics and then uh, everything, the p-value should be less than 0.05, right? That means our t-score, our t-score is more than 1.96 or maybe t-score is negative 9.1.96. So when we say about the two size t-test, here is a zero. And then uh, when we looking at the, this kind of uh, relationship, we have to, our, our t-value for the 
our T value for the COVID beta beta estimate should be within within minus 1.96 and 1.96 and then uh, more than 1.96 which is the this one like a 2.5 rejection region and then a uh, negative less than uh, now 1.96 is the another 2.5 region for the reject the hypothesis right so in this case there is in r there is a command called pt and then by using the degree of the freedom and then that beta uh, beta values we can easily calculate about the what the p value going to be which is the uh, this e minus e negative 6 is the uh, this is the 10 power by minus 6 so which is the very very small small value right but for the reference, you don't like this kind of a e minus e negative six kind of a output in R. What you can do is when you uh, type the options and Saipan equal nine nine nine. This means you can actually allow to allow R to get the get the 999 decimal level you can use these options this option command like uh, okay let me let me write this down more clearly like options SCI pen equal 999. If after, after learning this command and then when you learn this command, you will get the more, more accurate kind of a value, like a 0 0.00002 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 something like this. They act, are gonna be give you the full decimal level of the numbers, okay? So sometimes I use this one a lot to get the exact kind of a T values because I don't like the, this kind of a E negative six kind of things. Sometimes it is very confusing for me. So that's the reason why I just try to do that. And then you also do the same thing like uh, by using the P norm functions like a, like a, uh, a probability of the that normal standard deviations and then multiply by two because this one is only calculate about the one side, one side, one side p value. So we have to multiply by two. Same thing for the, this one, pt functions and then a p norm in this case, only calculates about the one side p value. So we have to multiply by two in this case. So any questions so far? Anything? Okay. So, so at the bottom, R function is uh, just kind of showing the uh, very useful kind of a plot function called uh, how we how four seven t value is for negative four seven five is at. So here is the negative four seven five at right. So when we looking at the p value, it is very 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 small, right? According to the this standard uh, standard normal distribution uh, curve, right? Which is the mean is a zero, right? And then uh, this one is actually like a uh, uh, standard deviation is one. So so when we looking at the, this negative 475 is a very, very small p-value. So we can say that our, our uh, relationship between the teacher to uh, students to teacher ratio is a significantly associated with the score of the students. Especially what the negative value is, uh, is that when we interpret the, that negative value, it says that increase in the student's teacher ratio gonna be decrease the average score of the students, right? That's the, what he says, what he says, like a negative relationship. So more, so if a teacher have a more students in, in, in their classroom, in the classroom, 
students in that classroom tends to have a less lower score, lower average score of the test. That's the what, what the model says about the negative kind of a coefficient. Okay, so let's move to the next one. So next one is now we can calculate about the confidence interval for the regression coefficients. So when we say about the, this one is a kind of like a, why we have to confidence interval is if we can get the, uh, get the T value and standard error term and, and also estimate the beta value, that means that somewhere like a, we have a beta one value in here and then a somewhere between between some range of the range of the uh, values, there there might be the true value in somewhere. Maybe it might be here or it might be here. So so that we cannot exactly know about the, what the true value are. We don't know because of the our our regression model actually using the sample sample uh, uh, population sample sample the population and then we do not use the total entire population for our model that means it is very hard for us to find the find the true value but we can still estimate about the what's the problem what's the range of the values or uh, where the actual true value gonna be located that's the how we actually the reason why we calculate the confidence confidence interval. So it is a very very simple to calculate uh, calculate the that value, which is the confidence interval for the ninety five percent level for the better one is the between the because one point nine six is 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 a point. 0.25 like a T score kind of a level, right? So 1.96 multiplied by standard error and plus 1.96 multiplied by standard error. So this one actually gives us about the, some, some set of the range, which is the lower, lower range and then the upper range, right? So that means Somewhere between these two values, there is actually true value. We don't know where, but our true value is the is the ninety percent, ninety five percent of the certainty to our true value is located somewhere between these two values. Okay. So let me move down here. Yeah. Um, just to add that, that that we could just say like uh, um sort of this uh, if if it doesn't include the, the zero then you know we sort of we reject uh the 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 null hypothesis something like this yeah yeah right because uh, in in this case when we when you actually by by seeing the competence interval like a range of the lower and upper level okay we can actually uh, maybe just kind of a uh, guess that the how coefficients coefficient estimate is estimate is gonna be significant or not. I'm gonna do that in at the bottom, but actually to be uh, in some way maybe in here is a low value and upper value, and then uh, in between these two value like a uh, low value is the negative, and then a uh, upper value is the positive. That means there is a zero value between the, these two range. That means actually there is a kind of a, our P value for this, based on the disconfidence interval, our P value gonna be more than, uh, more than 0 0.05, which means that, that, better, uh, that better estimate gonna be the not significant compared to the Y uh, pre uh, predicting the y value in the, in the simple linear regression model. That's the also how we can interpret about the look at the in com uh, confidence interval. 
So that's another thing we can do. So hold on. Okay, so let's move down. In here is a just kind of a, it's a kind of a hypothetical kind of a y and index model, and then it actually calculating the calculating the confidence interval level like a mu minus nine point one point nine six and mu plus one point nine six, and then uh this is a standard deviation like a square root n, and then uh, this is the standard deviation of the L, L term. So that's the how this one is about, because uh, our L term is a uh, variation is uh, 25. So our standard deviation for the low score is the five. So by using the, all of the, these numbers, we can get actually lower and upper values. So, when you say that in here, we actually know, and in here actually we test about the mu value, right? That means in this case, it's a uh, null hypothesis is maybe our, our mu value equals five. And then the other, the alternative is that u is not five. But when we looking at the, this confidence interval, it is uh, like a 4.502 and 6.46. So that means in between the, these two values, actually there is a number five, which is the mu. So that means our confidence interval contains uh, that uh, average true value. So that says this one, this one gonna be the highly significant and then uh, that might be the, our, uh, the, uh, the mean of y gonna be most likely to be five. But I'm kind of a little bit confused why they, why this one is actually show, show why the author is show this kind of approaches as an example. This one actually should be seen in the chapter three, but it actually explained by here. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a kind of weird, but anyway. But, in, in the linear regression things, actually in here, when you, when one, when this one, this plot is actually does is just out of the, out of the 1,100 simulating the confidence interval calculations, if we can get uh, maybe 95% of the confidence interval with a highly significant p-value, that, that actually shows that uh, there is a, very, very low probability of the, of the mu, mu y is not five. So every red line in here is actually, actually does not include this dashed line. You know what I'm saying? So it is very hard to see here, but this one is actually uh, separate apart. So, as you can see, there is actually gap in here. So that means this interval does not include uh, any, any five, any mean value, which is the five. That means this in this, in this kind of a simulation studies, mu, mu, mu y is not the five. So those are the cases. So this means out of the, out of the 100, there is only four cases which uh, that does not meet, meet our hypothesis testing. So that means our p-value is 0.04 in this case. So this is a highly hypothesis and simulated studies. So it is uh, not actually what uh, actual model actually look like. So, but the thing is that this is just kind of a simulating and then showing that the how confidence interval is uh, is about so that's the kind of thing so any questions okay so in here at the bottom so now we can actually have using the that confidence interval approaches to our linear model so there is a function called conf, conf int functions so using this one and then uh, setting up the linear model object we can easily get to the what's the upper level and lower level. 
you know, right? So in this case, we can have a value for the beta zero is the 680.32 and 717.54. And so in between these things, there is a no zero value, right? So that means our p value for the beta, beta zero is highly, highly low. So which means it's a very significant. And same for the beta one. Beta one is also negative 3.2223 and then negative 1.336, et cetera. So this one also does not contain the zero. So which means the beta one is a very, very low probability that uh, that beta one can get zero value. So beta, both beta zero and beta one is a high, highly significant, which is a very low, very low p values for these things. Just looking at the, just calculating the confidence interval. And then when we thinking about the 6.8, 680 and 32, and then the 7, 717.54 means, this one is upper level, right? So that means some of the school in our sample, the average size gonna be the very close to or almost equal to the this value. And then in case of the low school, low school like with the poor performance school, the average gonna be the those poor school gonna be close to the this number as a lower value. In the in a in a in a thing, but Definitely, in in within the our five percent rejection region, there is also definitely outliers, you know, because because uh, there is a, might be the, some school much less than the low value, and much higher than the upper value, because we these are the actually ninety five percent confidence interval. So we still do not we still have uh, missed the five percent of the outliers. So that means. This low and upper value is uh, just um, value is uh, just kind of a testing about the how poor score students can get as a lower value and then upper value for the average highest score students usually can get when we when they have uh, good performances. That's the how this one is about. Okay, so. Let's move to the next one. So next one is uh, actually very interesting regression approaches. So regression is uh, when X is a binary variable. So which is the zero or one or yes or no kind of a kind of a variable. We, we have a Y variable for zero or one or yes or no kind of value, right? So Instead of the we have a continuous variable, we can also get the get the term uh, binary variable for this. So in this case, in the di is gonna be the one. Like uh, in this case, for the uh, students district uh, students score set score data set, we can actually set up the dummy variable for the that school district is less than twenty is a one and then a uh, school district is uh, more than equal to 20 that is a zero value so actually what this one does is uh, there is a, a lot of uh, school information and then uh, they actually dividing about the grouping by the school for the school district is the one to one through 19 and then a 20 to whatever Okay, that's the how they grouping on. And then uh, these are the group one and these are the group two. So that's the kind of a one or a zero kind of a binary approaches, right? So we can actually do these things in here. Actually, when we learn the this command, we can get the logical variable like a true or false. Or maybe you can use the another another way you can do is you can do this 
like this, like a CS cool, dollar D equals if else, uh, CA school, uh, dollar sign STR is less than 20 is one, otherwise is zero. This one also can, can give us about the one or zero value for the this D variable. Okay, does that make sense? You can run the command if you want. So these kind of things. And then uh, when we plot uh, this variable, you can see that at the bottom in here, now we actually have uh, all of the all of the school district less than uh, more than 20 is score is range is a distribution like this. And then uh, one is a distribution like this. So when we try to make a distribution of the each variable, like uh, we have uh, these kind of density estimations, right? So that means what's the probability of the D value gonna be moving from the zero to one? What's the probability of that? That's the actually better one is about. Okay. Does that understand what I say? All right. So, and then uh, when we scroll down in here is, so here is the kind of a, kind of a interpretation. So this is a very important. So. In this case, in the beta zero is expected test score. Uh, when the STI is the above above a twenty, so which means uh, when D is a zero value, actually we can that's the expected value for the uh, school district is a zero, like a like a Y as a Y intercept. This the beta zero plus the beta one is. When the school school district, when some school belongs to the school district, the district less than 20, that's the expected value that school can get, okay? That's the, how these things is about. So when we do the LM function by using the that dummy variable, we can say D and true value, so that, that means we actually said about the D force is what is called the reference group. So that means compare to the school, school compare to the schools that belongs to the school district value is zero. School, school that belongs to school district one tends to be have a high, higher score, higher score of a 7.169 more compared to the schools that belongs to the school district is zero. So that means, okay, school district is zero and school district is one. So expected value gonna be when the school district is a zero, it means 650.77 plus 7.169 multiplied by zero. So this one is anyway con zero. So it's a 650.077. So when the school district is one, that school is a belonging to the school districts is one, their expected value is the 650.077 plus 7.169 multiplied by one. That actually gives us about the 657 and, and maybe how, how, how much is a, maybe two, four, two, four, six or something like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? So 
amount of the debt beta estimates, there is actually expected values, the differences between the, those two groups. And then when we looking at the testing, the these standard error is these values. And then T value is this one, which is the very, very high. Uh, and then P value gonna be the, this kind of values. And then when we when we looking at the residual standard error is uh, this one for the for, for 18 degree of the freedom, and then uh, R square is uh, this one, and then the adjusted is uh, just adjusting the our sample size is uh, this a little bit lower R square, and then F statistic is uh, this kind of number in the one and 418 uh, standard deviation. So that means when we have a one standard deviation, what's the value of the our chi square? And then what about the 418? And then uh, by calculating the difference between the chi square in one and chi square in the one on 418, we can get the this number. And then uh, this number actually very significant chi square, which is the this one, this. Uh, this model actually have a very good goodness of fit right now, even if R square is a very low, which is a lax explanation, but still it is it this model is a still kind of a very uh, kind of a good fit compared to the, our sample data set. So every do you understand every any questions? Okay. So, and also, as we did the previous sections, we can also calculate the, our confidence interval. And then uh, our confidence interval is saying that there is a no zero value between the these two uh, range. So that means uh, by looking at the just confidence interval, we can figure out the how significant they are at the same time. We can also figure out about the somewhere between the these upper and lower value, like a six point six hundred four seven three three, and then a six and six fifty two eight two. There is a somewhere between these two value. Maybe there might be the very true value of the population. We don't know where, but our true population on ninety five percent certainty, we can say that our true value gonna be uh, between these two values. So Abdul have a question about the, is it the residual SC and the same of the root MSCs? Uh, 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 okay, I, you mean the man, uh, means square error, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I think I, I cannot exactly remember the what the means mean square error uh, error is. But the thing is uh, actually linear model is uh, the calculation of the standard error of the linear model is uh, based on the, the according to the linear regression uh, assumptions that there is a assumption that the error term is the standardized standard normal distribution, which is the mean of zero and one. So that's the kind of a, a little difference because a mean square error is a kind of like a how based on the predicted y value and actual observed y value, how different they are. That's the mean square error. Okay. Is that understand what you're saying? So that means the uh, maybe I think that they are quite similar concept because it's uh, actually anything, actually this is a, this is a kind of a looking at the error term, but the thing is a mean square error is a more like a, more like a uh, testing the variation of the error between the predicted Y value and actual observed Y value. That's what I understand, but I, it is hard to say because I'm not familiar with that means because I actually 
know what that mean square error is, but I personally, I did not use the dead one before. So it is hard to say how can I make a difference or same between the those two terms. So, but what I understand is the mean square error is the just kind of a between y hat and actual y. These are the difference and square, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. It's 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 somehow yeah. very similar. Yeah. 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 But standard error is a more like a root to n is y square minus zero in this case in the linear model. Oh, not the zero, like a y. It's the same, but it looks like the same, I guess. But yeah. because you, yeah. you know, if you use, if you use uh, stata, it doesn't give you the the residual uh, standard errors. It gives you the root of the uh, mm. MSE. Ah, okay, gotcha. Mm. So maybe I think that MSE is a more like a, have a de definition about the maybe when we use the linear regressions for the for the for the prediction predictive regression model purposes. That's the why what this one actually used. Try to calculate about the how predict how predictive variable is the cross accurately accurately uh, predict the actual y value, right? That's the mean square error is about. So I think that lower mean square error gonna be the good predictive model power. That's the what this one this concept is about. Is that correct? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And then let's move to the 5.4 then. So, because we already have a 10, 12, so I'm going to try to do quickly. So, uh, I did check yeah. with John, and we have uh -huh. plenty of time if we need to go over. Ah, okay. So, do you want me to do the rest of the two sections? I, I, have time, I have time today, but we don't need oh. to rush through it. Oh, okay. Because cause actually chapter five actually contains too many information, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> it's a kind of a more in-depth on understanding about the hypothesis test and uh, of the linear regression. And then uh, when we looking at the chapter six, like a multiple regressors, that's gonna be the more complicated so yeah, so do you want me to keep going or do you yeah. do you want me to stop here? Let's keep going. Okay, sure. So heterogeneity and homoscedicity is the kind of like, uh, the, in the previous sectors, we actually rely on the assumption that error variance is not very as the reverse value changes. That means our, our error term is a highly random like this, no patterns, okay? Just have, a, just have a mean of the zero with a standard deviation is a one. That's the, that's the kind of a, our error term is about. If our linear regression violates the, this kind of assumptions, that actually overestimate or underestimate coefficient estimate or, coefficient value of our linear, linear model, which actually distorts the relationship between the X and Y variables. So in that case, we can, that model actually works, seems to be worked, but the thing is that model is not correct, okay? So that's the, how these things is about. And then uh, when we try to do the heteroscedicity and then the homoscedicity, so error term is a homoscedicity when the variance is the kind of like this this have a conditional distribution of the mu value. Like a, in here, in this case, I can say zero, cause uh, cause uh, in linear regressions actually error term follows the standard standardized normal distribution with the mean of zero and variation is one. But actually, the actual operational definition is the distribution of the mu value given the xi. And then 
almost homoscedicity is the special case of the heteroscedicity. And then we can uh, have, have a conditional variance of the mu depending on the xi. We can calculate those things in the one through n. And then we can, uh, what do you call it? We can click the click the, these kind of error terms as a plot for the each observation in our sample. Okay. So when you scroll down to get to the, this kind of a test, actually I'll use the uh, one R package called scales. And then uh, in this case, there is a very hypothesis sample size and an error term. And then uh, there is a simple hypothesis model in here. And then uh, when you plotting the this run the this command, it actually shows about the example of the heteroscedicity as a kind of a this this plot, like a box plot. But the thing is, I think I don't actually still don't understand why why this plot is about. Because it's a hypo hypothetical kind of a result and then a modeling kind of approaches. So I'm not familiar with this kind of thing. So I just uh, looking down to the actual model in here. So actual model actually use the, these kind of a, a model equations. So for example, like a Y value is the wage and then a, and then uh, X value is the education. So that means our research question in this one is the, how level of education can affect to the increase or decrease in the wage, you know, depending on the level of education, which is a kind of a good question to ask. And then when we try to do this one, and then we can do the very brief summary, descriptive statistics and then uh, as we can see, there is a, we can see the simple uh, education regression model. And then when we try to uh, try to do the relationship, so that means there is a dead trend line in here. It says like there is a positive relationship, that means Higher educate higher education level gonna be higher wage higher average wage okay. Why am I position? Okay. So so everyone understand what this one is about, and then we can actually calculating about the. Uh, air term for the for the heteroscedicity kind of test because in here there is a kind of a very looks like a little bit complicated explanation but it is uh, just kind of a uh, upside down kind of things of the calculating the uh what is what what does it says uh uh, I guess, oh no, not the standard. Okay, let me explain. Okay, so heteroscedicity has uh, this kind of formula, and then uh, these are the variation, and then uh, when we uh, square root for the this, gives us uh, this kind of formula. So you, we you we don't have a memorized these kind of uh, equation because there is a absolutely low possibility we can actually manually calculate the, this kind of this kind of value by using the this formula. You just uh, look at the, this formula and uh, what this one is about, okay? And then when we try to do the all of the, these manually things or maybe computation of the, these heteroscedicity to testing the robustness of the error, which we can do is uh, this kind of uh, this kind of a formula which is a little bit complicated. And then we can say about the, by using the, these functions, free cov 
HC. This one actually give, give us about the, a matrix with a, with a, a diagonal, diagnosis, diagonal axis actually have a variance. And then uh, the other, the other thing is that this one is a covariance. Okay. So that is what this one is about. So by using the this V curve HC functions uh, command, we can get the, these these kind of a matrix kind of a relationships. And then uh, and then plotting the test of the coefficient test and then uh, some kind of a regression kind of a approaches and then uh, to get to the that error term. And then uh, when we looking at the plot, you will get the, these kind of a interesting plot like a, like a, hold on, like a fan out, right? This is what is called a fan out, which means there is a kind of a relationship we don't know between the error, error term, okay? In here. This one is a just kind of a fan out like this. So that actually have a kind of a very specific relationships uh, uh, for the error term. So that means we have to look through the, the other external factor we didn't consider. So in this case, what I can say is uh, our error term or our, our scatter plot actually shows the our error term has an issue, what is called a heter uh, heteroscedacity issue. That means in the error term, in the error term, there is a other unknown factors that affects to the that affects to that distorts to our x one and y relationships. So we have to address the, this kind of heteroscedacity issues, we have to do the two things. One is the maybe looking at the data set once again, and then uh, try to figure out how we can manipulate the, this data set more in depth. The other way we can deal with the heteroscedacity is we can use the another X2 or X3 factors that removes the, the removes the these kind of a fan out heteroscedacity relationships. Okay. That's the how heteroscedacity should be handled in the in the linear regression model. So any questions so far or anything? Okay. So uh, next thing is our Gauss Markov theorem. I huh, I never seen this theorem theorem before. I think I learned somewhere maybe in the my ec econometrics class, but I cannot remember what this one is about. So, but the thing is in here. What he says is uh, when the estimate the regression model, we know the result is the estimate procedure is a random. Yeah, because it's a random. But the thing is, uh, when using the unbiased estimates, like at least on the average, we can estimate the two parameter. But the thing is, uh, what if it's a kind of a kind of a biased kind of a likelihood? So that's the what the, this theorem is about, I guess. So, because uh, that means our, this one is, look, what this one actually says is in here, the, or as supposed to the assumption made in the whole the errors is the homoscedastics. In that case, our estimate is the best 
best linear conditioning unbiased estimate like a blue in this setting. So that means we, when we have uh, errors with the homoscedasty and also our beta one and beta zero estimate is a high, ex estimate is a highly come from the, our random sample populations. That's the what we can, we actually assume. In that case, our, all of the, our regression estimate is uh, gonna be the very best linear conditionally unbiased. So, which means our OLS estimate is unbiased kind of things. Cause, uh, cause we actually pretty confident about the, our, sam our sample is the highly randomized, random sample, randomly drawn from the populations. And then beta one and beta zero is uh, calculated based on, the, based on the dead random sample. And then, Errors produced by the between the y hat and the actual y value is also homoscedastic, which means that there is a no other external factor that can affect to the relationship between the y one and y, uh, no, no x one and y. So in that case, we can say to say about the, our model have a unbiased kind of a estimate. That's the, what this one means. So when we have a unbiased conditionally regression means we have a better one is the sum of the, this AI weight and multiply by YI and then sum of the, all of the, these. So A is a weight that allows the depending on the X but not the Y. So it's a, it's a depending on the X value but not Y. So Actually, it is the bias, which means the A1 actually also have the weights on the Y value. That means we have a kind of a problem. And also our model cannot be, bi uh, cannot be unbiased because uh, A1 actually have a weight that actually affects to the X1 and Y1. So that's the how this one is about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's scroll down. So this one is actually kind of a blue rain uh, estimate about the simulation study. Like uh, it is always uh, related to the sample size and then uh, epsilon value here. Okay, so that's the kind of a weight variable. And then it is assigned to the half of the sample for the, this one and store the using and plus one. Then when we do this at the bottom kind of a command, we can have a, have a these kind of things. So actually our ORS model is a much much concentrated near to the this zero normal standard deviation when we are uh, in the weight compared to the weight weighted in here. So when this plot actually says about is both estimation seems to be unbiased, which means the mean of the this estimate distribution are the zero, the error term. And then uh, estimate the using the weight is the deviate from the dose implied by the EMS as estimator and then a higher hybrid portion is uh, this one instead of the this one as a required. Cause uh, I also still kind of figure out what this one is about. But the thing is what I can understand from the this sample, this kind of weight it means sometimes in the survey data analysis, which is uh, kind of like a highly biased kind of a distribution of the sample by the race or ethnicity, by example, which means when we try to conducting the survey in the US, we can have a, a, lot, of a, a lot of a sample size for the white population, maybe some black population, but, but the thing is, Maybe there is a lower, lower probability of the get the enough sample size for the Asians, for example, 
or maybe Pacific Islander. In that case, in that case, their sample size is gonna be low. But the thing is, what we wanna do is every group of the analytic weight should be the should be the represent to the all of the these these group categories in the equally as equal as possible. So to do that, actually we can actually try to apply to the weights variable. So actually when we usually do the survey, we have a higher probability to the enough higher amount of the big amount of the white population survey result. So in that case, the our analytic weight is gonna be lower because we still we quite have a very good sample size. So that means each observation has a low representatives of the white population. Black population is a slightly higher than the white population because of the there is a not enough the proportion of the sample size can get for our survey from the black population. In case of the Asian and Pacific Islander, we have a we have a very high probability have to get the lower samples, very lower sample size. In this case, each sample gonna be represents the represents the Asian entire population a lot. That means analytic weight is gonna be the much higher compared to the white and black. So this kind of a weighting can be applied to the our regressions. Like y is the weight plus x1. This is the, what is called the weighted weighted regressions, or maybe some kind of a penalized. Maybe this weight is actually penalty. Things is the kind of a penalty penalized regression model by using the more depending on the sample size we can actually apply to the more weight and less weight of the each observation samples to, to get to the get to the unbiased linear as linear regression estimator. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Anything? Okay. So last thing is, is about the just kind of a sample t statistics. And then when the sample size is small. So when the sample size is small, our t statistic gonna be the very, very ticky because of the that t statistic can be changed depending on the sample size, very sensitive to the sample size. Okay, cause uh, our T distribution is uh, these kind of uh, equations, right? Cause uh, this one is actually what is called a standard error. And then G score is a kind of like a normal kind of a standardized score, right? And then this gives us uh, this one. But when we have a very small sample size, it is a uh, kind of a uh, tricky to calculate the, our T statistic and then uh, testing the variable cause when you can see here in the red dot, it is sometimes have a higher peak of the distributions or sometimes very close. The reason why we, we have a problem with the, uh, uh, actually we have a, the issue when we have a very smaller sample size is that like a, Actually, this kind of a simple linear regression situations, actually, if we have a sample size is a 20, it does not matter too much because we only have a X1 parameter to predict the Y, right? So our degree, our parameter number is a one and then a, we can still have a degree of the freedom is 18, right? We still have a large degree of the freedom, and then uh, our our beta one and beta zero tends to be have a very follows the very normal distribution curve, which is a, we still get a very good 
of the good of goodness of the fit kind of model. When uh, the, uh, the problem actually occurs when we have a y equals like a multiple multiple independent variable like a variable x3 etc like a beta 3 beta 2 beta 1 beta 0 etc in this case maybe for example when we have a our sample size of the 15 but the thing is our number of parameter is maybe for example like a 14 in that case, our degree of the freedom is 15 minus 14 minus 1 is 0. In this case, we cannot work on the, our regression model. When you do, when you run the LN command by under the, these kind of situations, you will get the, you will get an error. Because that means we cannot estimate the coefficient value for the each each variable. So in this case, on the only problem, the only solution we can get is the maybe reduce the variable number, parameter number, or increase our sample size. So get the more sample, or maybe using the less less variables. So in chapter five, we only use the one single x variable. So in this case, even if we have a n 20 variable, it does not have a too much problem. But the, th the only problem, and we have a small sample size in the simple linear regression is maybe this n minus 20 and 18 degree of the freedom is uh, maybe according to the t tables, we have a different kind of a t scores. That means Depending on the degree of the freedoms, our t statistic gonna be the more sensitive depending on the our sample size. Okay. So that's the one of the reason why the more sample, the better result and better fitted model we can have. Okay. Usually, what I understand about the rule of thumb. for the sample size in a regression model is uh, someone says n minus n equals 50 or maybe n is uh, at least 100. For, for the, if assuming that, assuming that we have a very sufficient independent variable to test and then, and then we want to get the estimate very generalizable regression estimate from the, our model. To do that, rule of thumb for the regression, for, in regression model for the sample size, maybe n is uh, 50 or n is 100 gonna be the rule of thumb, like uh, more, than, more than this, gonna be give us the good, good generalizable result. So that's the end of the chapter five. So here is the exercise and then uh, these kind of things. So do you have any questions or anything? I think I'm yeah. good. It's just yeah. like, yeah. yeah, it always makes sense when I'm going over it. And then I just have to like, remember to put it into practice. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, right. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, right. But. Just uh, just kind of uh, know the just try to try to your best to be familiar with the concept by itself, yeah. Rather than focusing on the formula, okay? Yeah. Formula, formula by using actually you don't use the formula, okay? I would say maybe almost forever. Yeah. Formula just to say about the how those things gonna be calculated and then how those things works, you know, okay? But what is the real problem is based on the, that kind of a mechanisms, how those mechanisms can be interpreted when we're using R and then when we get the value, mm -hmm. okay? That's the important. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, what I really try to explain when I 
try to study the chapter. So, so that's the reason why I just usually skip the R command and yeah. this formula. Cause the R command is just kind of a, as a matter of a simple typing the command, right? Mm -hmm. But when we get the value that we from the that functions, how we can interpret that and then how we can understand that value. That's the, our skill set we have to develop, yeah. right? So that's the reason why I spend more time to the, try to explain as best as I can to the, what the concept is about. For example, in the 5.6 sample size is small, that actually have uh, our T statistic test gonna be very sensitive depending on the, our sample size. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the, what is called a T table, you know? Oh, I almost certainly did in like one of my stats classes and then- Yeah, yeah. That yeah. T table, when you're looking at the, that T table, maybe X or Y, maybe row or column says about the degree of the freedom. Mm -hmm. One through maybe 49 or 50, I guess, you know? Yeah. Cause that's the reason why they, that table actually existed is the sample size is small. We had to look at the that table to testing the our border is a significant or not. Mm -hmm. That means depending on the changing into the one degree of the freedom can change our modeling interpretations. So that, that's the reason why I said that sample size is small, T statistic yeah. examination gonna be very sensitive to the sample size. So that's also what we can say is that's also one of the reasons why we had to collect the more sample size, as many sample size as possible mm -hmm. to avoid the, these kind of a sensitivity issues. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So rather than try to using the, these, uh, try to using the, this kind of a formula to memorizing the, this formula, just concepts, understand the concept and then the interpretation is more important. Yeah, no, I think for me, it's usually like, I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly like yeah. the concept itself, but I'll come to a point where I go, hey, I remember I need to do something differently here. Mm -hmm. And then I just need like, it takes me a second to like go back and figure out exactly what. Yeah, right. But I'm, I still feel pretty good because at least I know I'm supposed to do something different and I can't just like mm -hmm. do the normal thing. Yeah, and also I also try to based on the, my experience. I also try to uh, explain about the what's the solution about yeah. the, when you have uh, each kind of issues. Like uh, when your sample size is small, first first the solution is to increase the sample size, mm -hmm. right? The other one is uh, if you use the too many parameters, yeah. you have to thinking about the more selective about the using selecting the your variable. Yeah, that might be the another way. But first, first the option is the more preferable. Mm -hmm. If you can have a more data available, and then maybe, maybe the reason why you have a you have a small number of sample sizes is because of the some of the missing missing data issues. In yeah. that case, in that case, you can think about the how you can fill the blank that missing mm -hmm. cells. Maybe you can think about the, what you call the imputation techniques. Yeah. And then uh, in this case, you can actually type the mean values or maybe mode value or maybe medium value to fill mm -hmm. the blank. Or maybe you can, you can actually do the another separate regression model to get the relation to, to identify the pattern, pattern of the, that missingness. If there is a, a, a kind of a pattern uh, for the miss, uh, missing data set, you can actually develop the, some of the separate regressions that allows us to the predict the 
predict the dead missing cells depending on the rest of the variable column. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because this is a, this can be done actually when you're looking at the data set, actually those missing cell has a kind of a pattern. Mm -hmm. In that case, you can estimate by using the, those patterns, by using the, the other variable that affects to the patterns, you can maybe X1 and X3 actually highly related, you think highly related with this missingness. That means when you're looking at the, when, when X1 variable have uh, some specific value or X3 have uh, some specific value, they always have a missing value. In that case, there is the pattern, right? In yeah. case of the dead patterns, by using the, this kind of a separate mini regression model, you can get, develop the regression model that predict the, these missing values. And then by using the predict, predict functions, you can get the predict Y value and then you can enter those things in here. That's another way you can do for the extended version of the option one mm -hmm. when your sample size is small. But I don't think that one actually covers in this book. I don't know. But, but when you search, when you Googled about the imputation technique in R, there is a lot of uh, documents and materials you can get. So you can, you, you can know how you can do this. Yeah. yeah. But usually those, those kind of uh, missing imputation techniques are not used in case of the social sciences. Usually those things actually using into the kind of a more like a engineering or some medical science when they actually, because they actually control the whole experiments, right? Yeah. In that case, they actually have a very clear pattern and relationship between the those missingness. So they can actually fill in the depth blank by using the imputation desk. So that's what I heard from the how imputation technique gonna be used. So, so right. yeah, so that's it. And then how, so, so are you gonna do the chapter six? I don't, oh man, I closed it. Let me just see. Did I say chapter six? Oh, okay, hold on. Hang on, wrong booker. Um, uh, yeah, actually, chapter six is the up to up to already done there. Okay, you can do the chapter seven. Then. Okay, I think yeah. next, Abdu said that next week is uh, the, the end of Ramadan, and uh -huh. he may not be able to attend. So let's uh -huh. check him on the chat. Uh -huh. and see if maybe we want to switch things around a little bit. Okay. Okay. Week. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. All so, right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then I'll see you next week then. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.